Hey everyone, Peter here with another imaging tutorial video. Today I want to talk about finding the best settings for your imaging experiment and specifically looking at the process of identifying the best resolution, pixel dwell time, laser power, and gain to optimize your images. I'll also talk a little bit about adjusting pinhole size, oversaturation, and some other settings that are relevant to optimizing your image settings. So to get started, let's go ahead and open up a few GUIs in Element that will help us do this optimization in imaging. So I'm just going to right click anywhere and I'm going to open the A1 Plus Compact GUI. Uh, that opens this window. Um, I'm also going to open up my LUTs or lookup tables that you can navigate to visualization controls and then LUTs. So these two windows are going to be what I primarily look at besides the imaging window itself for figuring out the best settings for my experiment. Now, which settings are going to give me the most bang for my buck, so to speak, in optimizing and controlling the number of detectable photons? And that's important because, of course, the number of detectable photons is going to directly correlate to better image quality. The more signal I acquire, the better looking my image is going to be. Um, I think there are many settings that will affect the number of detectable photons, but probably the two largest ones can be found in this A1 Plus Compact GUI under your channel settings. Both the gain, HVG here, and the 488, this laser power, are going to give you the two highest bang for your buck settings. This gain here refers to the detector gain. So you can think of this as it detects more photons at the end of the optical pathway. So this works sort of on the other end of the imaging experiment where you can bump up artificially the signal that you're detecting with your photomultiplier tubes. Um, the other setting is this laser power right here, 488. And what this will do is sort of on the other, the, the beginning of the optical pathway, this affects the actual laser power that is going to excite your fluorophore and your sample. So of course, if you increase the laser power, you're going to excite more fluorophores and get a higher signal out of that. Now there's going to be some compromise in how you go about selecting the best values for these, mostly governing the amount of photo bleaching you might experience. And that's gonna be dictated mostly by how much signal you're pumping into your fluorophores. What our objective here is to find sort of the best gain in the detector and the best laser power uh, to get, get a high number of photons without photo bleaching. Now, of course, there's other settings that affect your overall detectable photons. Uh, they just don't have maybe as large of an effect as these will in your experiments. Uh, and those include your pixel dwell time, or some people use frame per second. Uh, this pixel dwell time is basically how long the laser sits on an individual pixel in your image. So these numbers here are in microseconds, 1.1 microseconds, 2.4 microseconds, and so on. And usually they're, they're kind of already selected based on the size or resolution of your image. Which brings me to these values here. This is the actual, like I said, resolution of the image window that you're going to make. You can go all the way down to 64 by 64 pixels which will, of course, sacrifice resolution, but it will rapidly speed up your uh, imaging. Usually for actually taking uh, publication quality images, I suggest anything from 1024 and above. I kind of think that 4096 is overkill, but for some people, they really want those high resolution images um, and they want to select that. But I think anything above 1024 or 512 for that matter will be great for um, acquiring images for publication quality. The final setting I'll draw your attention to is this pinhole size right here. And this is a setting that's actually integral to confocal microscopy because, of course, confocal microscopy is only possible by employing a pinhole. The pinhole, of course, is there to reject out-of-focus light so you can get very crisp-looking images. And basically, by uh, increasing the pinhole size, you allow more light in, but you also allow more out-of-focus light. So you might get a brighter signal, but it's going to be less resolved than if you used a smaller pinhole size. So you can choose to increase this above what's already calculated for a specific wavelength and objective, but I would honestly say it's probably better to keep this at whatever the suggested value is. So those are overall the settings that you'll want to use to adjust the 
uh, signal that you actually acquire in your image. So let's go ahead and find the best settings for one channel that I have already selected here, the 488 green channel. And let's find the best settings for a particular sample I already have on the stage ready to go. So I'm going to start just by selecting what I think are the desired resolution and the dwell time and whether or not I want to average any of my frames. I'm actually going to keep this pretty much as it is right now. 2.4 microseconds is fine with me. As I said, uh, 1024 by 1024 resolution is also great. I'm not going to do any averaging because it typically just slows down my experiment and all the other settings I'm just going to keep as well, including the pinhole size. But I'm going to use my lookup tables, LUTs, to adjust these settings and figure out if I need to increase or decrease either of these values. So the key to finding the right settings is to limit your laser exposure when possible while trying to detect enough photons to reach roughly half the dynamic range of the detectors. And that's going to be indicated here in your lookup table. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I got some modest settings here so I don't initially start blasting my sample. And let's just see what we get. I'm going to hit the live button. And I'm going to see what we got. So right now, it's a, I, I hit stop. Um, my lookup table is indicating that essentially all of my signal is less than 200. Um, and this, these values, by the way, uh, correspond to the bit depth of my detector. In this case, they're, uh, I believe 4096 is 14-bit is um, or 16-bit. Basically, 2 to the n is going to give you uh, this value. And what I want to see uh, is values, or this, this um, graph here, extend to roughly about half of this total value. And the reason this is, is because this will give me a good contrast between a very bright signal, which will be up here, and the background. I want to see a big difference between those two. Um, and so that's what I'm going to aim for. Right now you can see it's very much mostly background. And of course you can see that in the image. You see, uh, well hopefully you'll see just a, a little bit of signal peeking through, but mostly it's background. And that's of course because we started with some very modest settings on my gain and my laser power. So now let's go ahead and start adjusting these so that I can get uh, a much better a signal to noise ratio, as they call it, or, or big contrast between my signal and my background. And to do that, I'm just going to start by increasing them both until I get to a better value here. So gain gives me a pretty big jump here. I'm just going to adjust these so there are some newer values, and let's hit play again and see where we're at. You can see um, immediately I see a much brighter signal here. Um, but as you can see, I have not yet reached the 2000 mark. So I'm going to increase these again to something maybe a little bit less of a jump. I'm going to go up to, let's say, 70. And there we go. So you can see here that there are some values that are starting to get, that are starting to, get to the 2000 mark. And I'm pretty happy with that. And just a note here, the reason why I uh, increase the gain over my laser power is because this is going to contribute more to photo bleaching because I'm pumping more laser power into my sample than this one will because this is going to just, it will add noise as part of being gain, but it will not necessarily affect the fluorophores themselves in my sample because all the, it's just artificially bumping up the photons that have already been released by my fluorophores. Uh, whereas this one is trying to increase the number of photons that are released by the floor force themselves. This, I'm pretty happy with this, this setup right here. But let's say that you had a couple of really bright pixels and uh, maybe your sample is incredibly bright and you're still trying to figure out what exactly you want. So I'm just going to bump up that gain again. And hopefully what you see on here is that my LUT is very high. It's actually, a, it's kind of reached 4096, which is the highest detectable level, and it's starting to pile up here. And that's because there are pixels that are saturated. And I can know that for sure by selecting this pixel saturation indication button. And what I'm gonna do is actually hit this drop down button and select a complementary color to green. Uh, right now it's set to white, uh, which you can see there's some white in here, but it's kind of hard to see. So I'm going to select red instead. And these pixels are where my brightest 
are, my brightest pixels are. And what I want to do is, of course, lower the gain so I don't have any saturated pixels. This is one of these things where you may think, I've got a very bright image, but it is saturated in some of your pixels, which can make image analysis later very difficult and potentially not possible because there are pixels that have saturated and won't be able to give you any good data. So I'm going to lower this, of course, back down to 70, which is a value we, we liked. And we're back down to 2,000. That's good. And you can go above 2,000. Uh, this is just a guideline. I typically choose 2,000 so that I don't really approach the 4,000 mark where I'm starting to get pixel saturation. As long as you're not saturating pixels and you're comfortable with the amount of light being poured into your sample, you can adjust these settings to maximize this contrast between the signal, which is, these are the brightest pixels, which typically correspond to your, your signal, and your, your background where all this is. So that will come down to you. That's just going to be you imaging and figuring out which settings are best for what you're looking at. But these are good guidelines for figuring out exactly what you what you want to look at. At this point, if you're happy with your settings, you can of course save them into an optical configuration, which I've shown in a previous video on how to do that. But then what you'll want to do is is move on to your next wavelengths. You'll you'll want to if you have uh, DAPI or some nuclear stain, you'll want to go through and, and do the exact same process. You'll want to adjust your gain and your uh, laser power to accommodate the nuclear stain that you have. And of course, same for all your other lasers. So you'll just do those in whatever order you see fit and ultimately construct presets that you can then use to perform your imaging experiment. And with that, I'm going to conclude today's video. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.